Okay, welcome everybody. Um, as Larry said, this is Maria and I'm stepping in for Holly tonight for the regular Monday night webinar. Um, also, as Larry said, we have quite a few new members who have just gotten their software and are probably wondering where the devil they should start with this. So we're just going to take it nice and slow tonight and um, do something really simple, go through um, the tools, the basic tools that we use to digitize a design. So I think I'm going to get started right away so we can get everything done that I want to do. I'm a lot slower than Holly, which will probably be a good thing for the new members. They'll be able to see what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to start out with saying that when you look at my screen, um, especially for people who have just got their generations and opened it up, my screen probably looks way different than yours does. Um, I have moved things around. You can move some of the um, toolbars around is up at the top here you can see I have my basic toolbar with my save and copy and paste and undo and redo those types of things I have my um, my zoom bar and then not sure what you call this one at the moment but it has a lot of tools that are important and we want to be able to use them um, you can move these around by just clicking on this little line here and dragging. So I can move that one over there and move this one over, get them lined up the way I want them to be. So that's just a little something that you can do to make your screen a little more personal to you. I wouldn't suggest making a lot of um, changes at first get used to what everything does and um, once you get digitizing a little more you'll get a feel for where you want to go to pick up the tools that you need. Um, <clears throat> now I just lost a thought that I was going to say. It's gone. That's me. Um, so once you have your screen open um, there are three basic tools that we use a lot for digitizing and you can do just about anything with those three tools. Um, I'm going to grab my pen here so I can show them to you. Probably the most used one is right here. It is the, I'm going to go back here a moment, Create Freehand Area Tool. And if you click on that tool, you can create an area that will be filled in with stitches. So that's one tool that we use a lot. I'm going to drop that tool by hitting Escape. The next tool that we use a lot is the create a freehand line. Um, if you click on that, that selects the tool. You can see you have your little box over here that um, has some information in it for you. Right now it's a run stitch and it's going to be the color blue. You use a series of right and left clicks to use this to create a line. So I'm starting here. I made one left click, another left click, another left click, and now I'm going to do a right click. Right click gives you a rounded line. So left click for straight and right click for round. Hit enter when you're done and you have created a line. I'm going to drop my tool, hitting escape, 
And then the next tool, we're not going to use this one too much tonight because it's a little, um, takes a little more work to learn how to use it. It's the satin area tool or the satin side by side tool. Um, if you were in last night's webinar, Holly went over using that tool quite a bit and that is um, you start with a left click and a left click to make a straight line, continue doing left clicks side to side, one side, the other side, one side, the other side. When you're finished, hit enter and it creates your stitches. You always want to remember to drop your tool before you try to do anything else when you're done digitizing something. So hit escape to drop that tool. So those are the three basic stitches that we'll be using tonight. And um, I'm going to get rid of these and we'll get started. I'm just clicking and dragging, drawing a box around all of them. You can see they're all selected now. And I can click delete and they'll all disappear. Okay, so to start with, we need to, um, if we're going to do a certain design, we need to bring in our artwork. And you do that by going up here to this little square. It's not going to tell me what it's called, but it's the import artwork. I'm going to click on that, and it's going to open a window to your computer. And you can navigate through your computer to find the artwork that you want. We're going to do these cherries tonight. So I'm going to click on it and select OK. The image processing box comes up then. We have some choices to make. Um, we have simple artwork, scanned image, photograph, or images template. The first three of these are um, auto digitizing types of things for for doing auto digitizing. We pretty much do manual digitizing here, so we're going to select images template and I'm going to click OK. And then the resize box comes up. Most of the designs that I do are fit in the in the 4x4 four four hoop or the 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter hoop. So this image is a little bit small. I'm going to make it a little bigger so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. So I always choose the highest number, make sure the maintain aspect ratio is selected, and then I'm going to go at 95. And then when I click tab, you can see with the maintain aspect ratio selected that um, the other number changes to reflect what I put into the first box. So I'm going to click OK, and there's our artwork. Right now, you can see that it's selected. It has the squares around it. I want to make it a little bit darker so it's easier to see. So while it's got those boxes around it, I hold my shift key and then click on my plus key until it's the color that, or the brightness that I want. If you want to make it lighter again while it's selected, just click the minus key. You don't have to hold the shift key to do that. So shift and plus to make it darker and then just minus to make it a little lighter. We'll go one more spot darker. There we go. So this is the design that we're going to work on tonight. Um, I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger here for the moment. There's nothing too fancy about it. We've got two cherries, the stems, and a couple of leaves. So when you start working on a design, 
you always want to start building your design from whatever is furthest back and work your way forward. Um, when I look at this design, I see the leaves are the furthest back because the stems cover them a little bit. So the leaves are furthest back, then the stems, and then we have this cherry and the other cherry. So I'm going to start with my leaves and not do anything real fancy, but I'm just going to work through them. I'm going to start with my Creative Freehand Area Tool. I'm going to select that. Well, I'm changing my mind. I'm going to escape and drop that tool. I'll do it the way Holly usually does and select my color first. I usually work in one color and then change my colors afterwards. So I'm going to pick a green, sort of a medium color green. You can see that that color is selected now from the color chip down in the bottom here. I'm going to select my free area tool and now I'm going to start digitizing my first leaf. Um, I'm going to start with a left click. Left click is always good because it just kind of So now I'm going to do a right click. Right click, right, right. I'm just going to follow the outline of this leaf. When I get to the top I want it a little pointy. So I'm going to do a left click and then I'm going to go back to my right clicks again to give me the curved edge. I'm going to go in just a little bit. Stems. I'm going to do my last click. If I can make it stick. There we go. And then I'm going to hit enter. And that fills in our area. When you're doing something like this that butts up next to another piece of the design, you need to go over just a little bit about a millimeter so you have um, overlap in your design. If you don't do that, when your design stitches out, you may end up with a gap in there where you really wanted it to look like the stem is over the top of it. So now I'm going to move over to my other leaf and I'm going to start with a left click, right click for the curve, I always think of it as right click round. And this one is a little more rounded, so I'm just going to continue with the right clicks all the way around. When I get to the end, I'm going to do a left click. Then I'm going to hit enter. And we've created our second leaf. So now I'm going to escape to drop this tool. I'm done doing the leaves and um, we'll go to 3D view, you can see what they look like. Nothing fancy, but they look nice and rounded edge, smooth edges, so they look good. The next thing I would do, I would like to put this um, line in here to kind of divide the leaf a little bit and this stem and then another line here to divide this leaf. So I'm going to choose a little darker green. This might be too dark, but we'll take it anyway. Now we're going to use um, a different tool. We're going to use the Create Freehand Line Tool. I'm going to select that. And we left off with this leaf over here, so I'm going to start with this leaf and I'm going to just follow the center of this dividing line in there. Oops. If you make a mistake, you can always hit your backspace button and that will, um, if you put one, if you put a um, point in not where you want it to be, you can hit your backspace and that will 
undo it and you can start over again. Point and I'm going to go right through here all the way through and I'm using right clicks here to give it just a little bit of a curve when I get to the end I'm going to do a left click and hit enter. Okay now I'm done with that and I'm going to escape to drop my tool. Now if you look at this line down in the bottom where it says stitch type you'll see that it's a run. Um, when you create a line like this there's three different types of lines that you can use. The first is a run stitch, and that's just a single line of stitching. Then there's the double run. That's um, a line that will stitch all the way to one end, and then it will come back. So you have a double line of stitches. And then you have the triple run. The triple run is kind of hard to explain. Um, I'm going to select that because that's what I like. I want this to be a little heavier so it shows up better. And then I'll show you what the triple run does. Grab my pen here. First I want to get rid of this. Okay, when you do a triple run, with this one, we're going from one end straight to the other. There's no nothing that comes off there. So what the software will do is it will do one stitch, it'll come back and do another stitch. Do one, two, three. One, two, three. So it's building up a little bit heavier line that's going to show up a little better. The, um, the single run is just stitching down like this. That's all it does from one end to the other. The double run would be stitching down all the way to the end and then it will come back and stitch in those exact same points. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Get rid of that. And we'll go back to our leaf. We'll see what that looks like in 3D mode. So there we have our dividing line in our little stem and another dividing line. Are there any questions on this so far? Okay. Um, now that we have that part in, our next part that would we, we would want to work on would be the stems of the cherries. I'm going to go up to 400% here. That's what Holly usually has us work at. I'm going to use my little navigator box here to get this centered where I want it. For the stems, they're a little bit heavier and I think I'm going to want to use a satin stitch for these. Um, we have a choice. It, there's two separate stems, so we do want to do this in two separate pieces. Being this cherry is further behind, I'm going to take it that this stem would be behind the other one. So I'm going to find a brown, and this should be good. And this time I'm going to use my side to side satin stitch or satin tool. I'm going to start down here and I want to overlap into the cherry about a millimeter. 
left click, left click. You can see when I did that other left click, I loosened up here. So now there's a little bit of a curve here. I'm going to do a right click, another right click. I'm trying to keep these straight across from each other. Right click, right click, right click. Up here I need to decide how far in I want to go. So I'm going to do a left click here, left click here. I'm going to go over into what looks like the other stem just a little bit. I'm going to do a left click and a left click. Then I'm going to hit enter and that will create my stitches. So I've got my satin stitches there. I want to finish up with this other one. My tool is still selected and my out is right here so that's good. I'm going to start with a left click, a left click, right click, just to give it just a little bit of a curve, right click, right, right, right. You can see I'm just going back and forth. Then when I get down to the bottom, I go in about a millimeter and I do a left click and a left click. When I'm done with that, I hit enter and that creates my stitches and then I drop my tool. So I'm going to back out a little bit here. We can see what we have. We have our two satin areas for the stems. So far that looks pretty good. Now we're going to work on the cherries. Um, I'm just going to use create an area for them and then we've got these little highlights here. We'll do a little bit of something with those. Nothing fancy, just a nice simple design. So this cherry is kind of behind. We'll start with that one first. Find a red. Ooh, I think we'll take this one. I'm going to go back up to 400. I'm going to use my navigator to get that cherry centered there so I can work on it. And I'm going to pick up my Create an Area tool. I'm going to start just inside of the front cherry, the left click, and then I'm going to do right clicks all the way around. I want to make sure that I'm covering a little bit of that stem. We're getting back up to the other one. I'm going to go in just a little bit, about a millimeter. Follow that one around. When I get to the end, I'll hit enter and we're good. I shouldn't be working, shouldn't be working in 3D view. So I'm going to drop my tool and get out of the 3D view. And Laura brings up a very good point here. Once you get digitizing a design, after you make your first area or line or whatever, you should save your design because things happen and before you know it, you've lost all the work that you do. So to save this design, I'm going to back out to just full screen. I'm going to drop that tool or deselect that area just by clicking away from it and I'm going to generate one time. I'm going to go up to 
little save design icon. I'm going to click on that. And you're going to navigate to wherever it is that you want to save your design. And let's see, where am I? There it is. Okay, I'm going to just save it in here and I'm going to call it Cherries. If I can spell. There we go. And click OK. So now my design is saved. If something happens, I should be OK. I'm going to go back up to 400. We'll finish that other cherry. Still have my red color is selected here. So I'm going to pick up my Create Freehand Area tool again. And I'm going to start right about here. I'm going to follow the outline, the edge outline of this design. As you can see we're going over a little bit over that stem to make sure we catch that and it gets behind the red of the cherry. I'm using right, whoops, I was going too fast and my tool thought I was done. So I'm going to select it again, start back here again, I'm using right clicks all the way around. Now I'm going to go in that little bit and follow this outline so we'll have our overlap. I get to the end. I'm going to click enter and then escape to drop my tool again. A little back out to full screen so we can see what we have. I'll go into 3D mode. And you can see we have our two cherries. This one looks like it's behind the other one. I also see we have a little green thread here. So by going out of the 3D mode and let's go back up to 400 so you can see this good. You can see that our smart software thinks it has found a way to travel from this green leaf, or I should say this is our first leaf, from this green leaf over to this one. Well, we really don't want it to do that because that's going to show up and you're not going to be able to trim that out of there. So what we're going to do, to move this out of my way, there we go. In between our two leaves, well, I'll show you this first. This is our um, film strip, I guess I call it most of the time. And um, you can make that a little bigger so it's easier to see. If you hover your mouse over it, over the edge, you'll see that arrow and you can pull on it and make it a little bigger. So in between our two green leaves you can see here's that travel stitch from this one and it's traveling to the next one. We don't want it to do that. So we have a couple of icons here. This is a color stop. This is our scissors and this is just a stop. So if we click on the scissors, you'll see that that line went away. So now instead of trying to travel in between these two pieces, the software is going to say, okay, we're going to make a jump. And um, then either your machine will trim that jump or you'll have to manually trim that jump. So we've got all of our areas put in there now. 
and everything looks really pretty nice, smooth edges, everything, the edges look nice and smooth, we're not too bumpy or lumpy. Um, we have a good thing going on here with the cherries with the two different um, stitch angles. You can see on the back one, we're pointing off this way. On the one towards the front, we're going a different direction. That's always good because if you have your stitch angles the same, you may end up with more puckering or something like that. There's, It's better to have them a little bit different. So does anyone have any questions so far? Or do I need to go over anything that I've done? Nothing so far? Okay. Well, we'll get out of 3D view. Oh, the left leaf is the same stitch angle as the cherry. Right, left. Close, but not quite. And usually the different angles you want for things that are connecting. Okay, Laura, you know what the color change scissors, but what is the use for the stop command? Um, for the stop command, this here, um, it works with my machine and um, it doesn't, if for some reason you wanted to um, click on this stop, for some reason you stitched this out and you wanted your machine to stop but you still wanted to continue using the same color, that's when you would use the stop icon. It, it's supposed to be a signal for your machine to stop and do whatever needs to be done and then you continue using the same color. Hope that answers your question. Okay, you wonder if the out was causing the jump on the left leaf. Well, that was a travel. So um, that was where the in is. And why it did it like that was because the software decided that we're going to travel here and then go in and start this next leaf. Sometimes the software is not always right, but now that we made that, we use the scissors so it will make a jump stitch that will have to be trimmed in between there. If we generate now, I'm going to deselect everything, and if we generate, We'll see if it changed the ins and outs for us. So this was our first leaf, and this is our second leaf. It didn't change it, but I would probably put my in up here. My out on this leaf is at this end, so I want my in as close as possible, and that would be right there. Um, Laura, yes, this design could be used for applique or that stop could be used for applique or mylar. Um, Sharon, I have a Viking Ruby and I use, I don't use the, um, I use the PES format for my machine and it seems to work. 
Yes, Laura, that stop could be used for that. But not everybody knows that that's what it would be for. So it, you might have to um, you might have to um, put that in the instructions that your machine is going to stop at this point. You won't need to change a color, but it's going to stop so you could lay something down. Patty, why do I use PES? Um, you know, when I'm digitizing for Holly, she wants us to send her PES files. So I always export to PES and it works on my machine. So I figured it's just as easy to throw that PES, PES in my machine rather than to convert to the VP3 format. And good point, Karen says, not all machines will recognize that stop. I'm lucky my machine does, but not all of them do. Okay. So, um, we're going to save our design one more time while we have it this far. And I'm going to go back out of the 3D view. And we have our little highlights on our cherries here. So, I'm going to go up to 400 so we can see them a little better and we can see which way our stitch angles are going. Um, there's a couple of different ways to do highlighting on a design and I think my favorite way is to just use the Creative Freehand Line tool. So I'm going to pick, I don't want to, when we looked at the, the artwork these looked kind of white white. I don't want it to um, jump right out at me. I want it to blend in a little bit more. So I'm going to look for a color that's um, lighter but not a real white color. So let's see what we have here that kind of will blend with that red. I'm not good at color matching so you'll have to bear with me here on this one. Uh, well, we're just going to pick something and stick it in there. We'll try this one and see what it looks like. Okay, so I've chosen my color. You can see it's showing here. I'm going to grab my Create Freehand Line tool. And when you look at the way the stitches run on this design, I want this to blend in. So I'm going to want to follow the same angle with my line as the stitches of the area. So I'm going to start with the left click and I'm just going to go back and forth here. I don't want it real heavy so I'm not going you know as close together as your fill is. I'm leaving some space in between there. I'm going outside the edge of that highlight a little bit because I find that um, these lines kind of pull in a little bit and I'm just doing left clicks back and forth until I get that area filled in the way I want it to. a little smaller here and then when I get done click on enter and escape. So I've got one in there and I move over to the other one and then you can see that my stitch angle is going a different way here. So I'm going to pick up my tool again. I'm going to start at the edge and I'm going to follow 
the angle of my stitches. When this stitch is out then, that's going to blend in and not stick right up on top of the original stitching. Finished. Enter and escape to drop my tool. Okay, I'm gonna back out here and we'll go to 3D mode and see what this looks like. See if I chose a good color. Well, I didn't choose such a good color. So we'll preview some colors. I'm going to go way over to the side here and we have our color strip bar. We have our light green for the leaves. If you click on it, then it highlights the areas that are that color. We have the dark green for the stem. We have the brown for the stems of the cherries. And the red for the cherries and then our highlight color. We can see both of them are selected so if I pick a different color on my color bar down here it changes both of them. That's almost a better color. Let's back out to one to one and sometimes it's better if you're back a little farther and you can see what it looks like. That's a little bit better. I'm going to select them again. And let's go back over towards the pinks a little more. We'll try this color. Now we're kind of way too white. That's a little bit better color. What do you think? Okay. So we have our cherry here. I'm going to save it one more time by clicking on the Save Design box. And we'll get back up to full screen so we can look at our design. I am going to um, shut off my artwork for a moment so I can see what it actually looks like. And I think that looks pretty good for just a nice, basic, easy to do design, which gives you an idea how to use the three main tools that we use for digitizing. We have um, our design done. I've saved it one time. I'm going to back out to 200. I need a little more space around here. You can see when I have my artwork shut off, there's this little d dashed line all the way around. I want to select that. You, you should always get rid of your artwork when you're done with a design. You want to move it out. So I'm going to select that. You can see the boxes all the way around it. I'm going to just grab the corner and pull that artwork up out of the way. I can click on the delete button and our artwork is gone. So that much of our design is done. We've got it saved. We removed our artwork. Um, let me check questions here quick. Okay, yes, the last color was better. Thank you. Um, the number of stitches is 73.75. Is that a good count for the 4x4 hoop? Yes, you want to keep your stitch count in the 4x4 hoop to under 10,000 if possible. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, but um, that's a lot of solid areas in this design so that's not a bad count for the 4x4 hoop. 
Um, Jeannie wants to know why the highlight looks like it is done in three rows. Um, let's go out of the 3D view and we're going to go back up to 400. Well, I'm just going to grab that for a moment. I'm going to select it and I'm going to pull it off to the side so you can see. Now this is a run stitch. so when I was making it, I was just going from end to end to end to end, but because it's a run stitch, it's putting stitch points down in there. If we go grab our little ruler here, and if we measure from one end to the other, that's almost eight millimeters and um, I'm going to hit escape to drop that. Our stitch length for a uh, running stitch is not that long. I'm going to left right click on it so we get the little moving box around it. I'm going to hit my space bar to open the properties for this area or for this line. We can see that it's a run stitch, and our basic step is two millimeters. So it's going to put a stitch every two millimeters. If I close this, and if we turn on our stitch points, this little needle penetrations, that means everywhere the needle is going to go down, it's going to show us the point. You can see that we're stitching, because it's a run stitch, it's, here's our tie in and tie out, so there's a few extra stitches there. It's going up here, needle down, needle down, needle down, needle down, and it has to take a little short one because it can't make a full stitch there. So needle down, then we're going back down the other way. So because this is pretty much the same length each up and down, that's why it looks like it's three, taking three, making three rows. Back back out here. Turn off my needle penetrations and undo a few times to get that back where it belongs. What do you mean by group, Patty? Okay, do we save it as grouped? If I made the step longer, it would change, but it would still probably, we're talking about the little piece here in the stitch penetrations, it would probably still look like lines, like there was three lines of stitching because it's about the same all the lines are the same length. Okay, another question was, why does this one look more open? I think because when I was digitizing it, I was doing my up and downs a little farther apart than I did with the other one. The other one I was maybe doing them a little closer because this is all freehand and you don't always do everything exactly the same. I'm going to control delete. When you have something that's flashing and you want to delete it, you use your control and delete button. And that's if you're on a PC. 
I'm not quite sure what it is for a Mac. I think it's a little bit different. But I'm going to control delete here. So now I'm going to go out to one to one. We've got our design pretty much done. And I'm going to draw a box around the design. It's just a left click and drag. And that selects all the little bits and parts of this design. I want to um, group these together. So on my sidebar over here, I have several different icons. This one right here with the two boxes is the group. So if I click on that, now all of those pieces are one group. If I try to move this, it's going to move all as one. While it's got the boxes around it, I can go and ungroup. Now, if I grab one piece, I can just move that one piece out of the way. I'm going to undo to move it right back where it belonged. And I'm going to draw that box again, select everything, and I'm going to click on Group. This is a good thing to do when you're completely done with your design so you don't actually accidentally, you know, grab a leaf and move it just a little bit and don't notice that you've done it and then um, then it might not stitch out good when you come to do your stitch out. Um, once you have your design all grouped together, you're going to want to um, save it one more time going to do that and then you're going to want to export it for your machine and there's a couple different ways to export the one that I, I'm just going to go through the one that I use the most and that I feel the works the best for me we have the two little sewing machine icons up here and if you click on the one is the enhanced format export and one is the enhanced format import. The import would be it you would use if you wanted to bring in an already digitized design that was in maybe PES format, VIP, HUS, or something like that in a machine format. That's what you would use the blue machine for to bring a design like that onto your screen. Um, the orange one is to export, and that would be to export your generations file into a PES or VP, VIP or something like that for your machine. So if you click on that, it opens a box and asks you where you want to save your design. So I need to go up here. Oops, too far. Where am I? And I want to save it in this folder. Down here it gives me a choice to choose which format I want to save it as. It has most of the basic ones. I want to save mine as PES. You're going to give it a name. I'm going to call it the same as I did my generations file and click OK. And then that saves it. And now you can do whatever you have to do with that to take it to your machine and stitch it out. So I think that's about all I have for you tonight. Is there any other questions? about anything that I did.